Hello and welcome. This is Pre-Union New College. This lesson is intended to provide information about thinking skills and how to solve these questions through strategical steps. These logical explanations and solutions will be beneficial. However, please be advised it does not give all the answers to solve the thinking skills questions. Most importantly, consistent study and reading are essential for successful results. Pre-Union New College has always taught strategies and tips to students on how to approach questions, and this lesson is intended to guide and benefit you. This lesson and guideline about thinking skills is not intended as a shortcut to understand thinking skills. Students must study consistently and to achieve successful results. Now let's begin the lesson. Welcome everyone to part 2-2, lesson 2, of problem solving strategy for thinking skills. In this part, we will be going through the types of problem solving questions you may encounter, and we will also be learning about some tips to solve these questions. There are three types of problem solving questions in thinking skills. They are finding procedures, identifying similarity, and relevant selections. We will be covering identifying similarity in, these, in this lesson. So what are identifying similarity questions? Identifying similarity questions are questions where students are presented with information in more than one way. These questions rely on students' ability to interpret the information and recognize the relationship and similarities between sets of data to answer the question. If we break down each word of the question category, identifying is the act of establishing and indicating what something is. Similarity is the state or fact of having resemblance in certain aspects or features. Essentially, we, are, we need to use logic, which is a foundational part of problem solving, to look for and interpret the relationship between pieces of information and, you, and then use our understanding of mathematical concepts. Finding procedure questions typically use the following mathematical concepts in which students should have a strong grasp of. They are table and graph, making conclusions, arrangement, and measurement. In this lesson, we will be covering the last two in detail, arrangement and measurement. Let's have a look at some example questions first. Arrangement questions will typically provide students with information presented through a visual stimulus. It is up to the students to determine the similarities between the arrangements of different shapes through rotating, mirroring, or tessellation. Consider the following example. Three different shapes are shown below. Which, of, which ones are needed to form a square? It can be seen that only shapes 1 and 2 are needed to make a square, and they can be they can be rotated and tessellated as the following. The general steps to solve this question is, is that you will need to understand the information. Then you will need to analyze the data. In this case, the data is the three shapes provided and then figure out similarities between the required shapes and different arrangements. So as we continue to problem solve and, and figure out which arrangements match, we understand that one and two when tessellated, can be formed into a square as follows. Next, we will look at a measurement question. Measurement questions require students to use their logic and conceptual knowledge of measurements to find the relationship between a certain pattern and the correct answer option. Consider the following example. Lizzie makes a pattern for her rug, and the middle section has been covered. What would replace the covered square? To solve this question, Make sure you understand the information, then analyze the data, and then find similarities between the desired pattern and different replacement options. The solutions of the question are given in the slide. The square can be replaced by the, the square can replace the square covering the rug in the given diagram to complete the rug. So this can be replaced in this section. Most of these type of questions will be prob will be uh, multiple choice, so you can use the process of elimination to determine the best option. When looking at problem solving questions, this is the general approach that can be used to solve questions.
let's look how we would apply these tips to identifying similarity questions. The first step is to read the question. If you misunderstand or misinterpret the question, your solution may be incorrect. The second step is to understand the problem that needs to be solved. In problem solving questions, many pieces of information will be provided and or related. Therefore, a thorough understanding of the question is necessary. The third step is to identify and process which pieces of information are needed to solve the question. In many questions, much more information that is needed is available and provided, and identifying which of the following information is not necessary is very important. The fourth step is to analyze the data and represent it in different ways. Presenting information in different ways helps to recognize patterns and gain further insight. Finally, the last step is to solve the question using the appropriate number concepts and processes. Use the necessary mathematical concepts and processes that you know to find the solution. Let's look at this example of an arrangement question, identifying similarity from the selective sample thinking skills exam. Shown below are three small pieces of the puzzle. Which one of the following big pieces can be combined with three small pieces to make a square? This question falls in the identifying similarity question category, as this question requires students to identify similarities between the shapes and the answer options. Then let's apply the general approach method to solve the question. The first step is to read the question and determine what it is asking. Since it is asking us which one of the following big pieces can be combined with the three small pieces to make a square, we want to determine the option that will best fit with the given pieces to form a square. We must identify the similarities between the pieces. Step two is to understand the problem that needs to be solved. Looking at the information provided in the question, we can understand, we can see and understand the three smaller pieces needed to make a larger square. In this process, it's helpful to identify important, important points and different patterns of these three pieces such that we can arrange and combine it with the big pieces to determine the answer. Step three is to identify and process which pieces of information are needed. From this question, a key piece of information is that we need to find similarities between the grooves of these three pieces with the grooves of the possible options. Next is to analyze the data and represent it in different ways. The information has already been presented in a simple form. Putting it in any other form may be time consuming. This is a typical This is a typical problem that we see in arrangement questions where it is unnecessary to put it in, in any other form because arrangement questions already provide you the most simplest form, which is the shapes. Finally, step five is to solve the question using the appropriate number concepts and processes. By considering the grooves and shapes of each option with the given pieces and using the pro process of elimination, we can deduce that the answer is B. As you can see, we, we, can, we can understand and see that the grooves of the three pieces directly match into the grooves and pattern of this huge piece, of this big piece, to form a square. Being able to see this takes practice and time and using the process of elimination is important. So make sure you practice and study. Let's continue to look at another example of an arrangement identifying similarity question from the selective thinking skills exam. When viewed from above, an object looks like the picture shown below. Which one of the following is a possible view from the side? This question falls in the identifying similarity question category, as this question requires students to identify similarities between the given diagram with the possible answer options. Now let's apply the general method to solve this question. The first step is to read the question and determine what it is asking. Since it is asking which one of the following is a possible view from the side, 
we want to determine which arrangement is possible from the given stimuli. Step two is to understand the problem that needs to be solved. Looking at the information provided in the question, we can see and understand the top view of the stacks of shapes. It's important to note that this is a top view as it is very important when we are using the process of elimination. Step three is to identify and process which pieces of information is needed. From this question, there are three key pieces of information. Key information one is that the shapes, are, the shapes stacked have a circular shape when viewed from the top. Key information two is that there are three objects that can be seen from above. And finally, key information three is that the diameter of the objects decrease as it goes up. Step four is to analyze the data and represent in different ways. In this question, the information has been presented in a simple form. Putting it in any other form would be time consuming and, un and unhelpful, which is common again for arrangement questions. Step five is where we solve the question and use appropriate number concepts and processes. The requirements of the shape is that the shape stacked have circular shape when viewed from the top, there are three objects that can be seen from above and that the diameter of the objects increase as it goes down. Option B is the only option that satisfies the requirements. The stack shapes in option B could be cylinders and that is why the side views are rectangles. Now let's look at this example of a measurement identifying similarity question from the selective thinking skills exam. Earlier today I built some ink onto the carpet of my living room and I have no success trying to remove the stain. This is how the carpet looks at present. Fortunately I have some off cuts from when the carpet was laid and I've discovered that if I carefully cut out an appropriate sized piece of the carpet around the stain one of the off cuts will fit into the space exactly without disrupting the pattern. This question falls in the identifying similarity questions category, as this question requires students to identify the similarities between the pattern in the diagram with the answer options. Then let's apply the general approach method to solve the question. The first step is to read the question and determine what it is asking. Since it is asking us, which one of my offcuts can I use to replace the stained piece we need to evaluate the given stimuli and determine which of the answer options can replace the stain section and continue the pattern. This is a form of problem of, of problem solving using the process of elimination. Step two is to understand the problem that needs to be solved. Looking at the information provided in the question, we can see and understand that the we can see and understand the pattern of the carpet and a piece has been stained, but we can replace it with an off cut. In step three, we need to identify and process which pieces of information is needed. From this question, a key piece of information is that the part of the carpet with the stain needs to be replaced such that the pattern continues. Step four is to analyze the data and represent it in different ways. In this question, the information has been represented in a simple form. Putting it in any other form may be time consuming, which is typical, which is also typical for measurement questions. And finally, step five is where we solve the question using the appropriate number concepts and processes. To solve this question, we need to consider all the options and identify any similarities between the stained part and the answer options. We need to consider all possible orientations of each option. We notice that the vertical cut of the stain piece in, is the same as the stain piece in option D when rotated. This is again the use of process of elimination and we need to identify similarities in the pattern pieces with each answer option. And it's important to be able to orientate and change and change the orientation of the option answers to identify similarities. Here is another measurement question. Identifying similarity from the OC example thinking skills exam. The diagram shows one of a, one of a number of ways that five different shapes can be arranged to form a square. 
Which of the following squares consists of the same five shapes as the square above? They may be turned over. This question falls in the identifying similarity question category, as this question requires students to identify similarities between the shapes in the given diagram and the shapes in the answer options. Then let's apply the general approach method to solve this question. The first step is to read the question and determine what it is asking. Since it is asking us which one of the following squares consists of the same five shapes as the squares above, we need to evaluate the given stimuli and need to find similarities between the given diagram and the answer options. The question also notes that the shapes may be turned over, so that is a fact that we need to keep in mind. Step two is to understand the problem that needs to be solved. Looking at the information provided in the question, we can see and understand the shapes that have been used to make up the square. We have this, two, three, four, five different pieces. In step three, we need to identify and process which pieces of information is needed. From this question and the information provided, a key piece of information is that five pieces have been used to make the square and the answer options can be rotated. We should also note that it's the five identical pieces have been used in the answer options. Next is to analyze the data and represent it in different ways. In this question, the information has been presented in a simple form, so putting it in another form would be time consuming and unhelpful. This again is typical of many measurement and arrangement questions where we need to use shapes to figure out the questions. And lastly, step five is where we solve the question and use the appropriate number concepts and processes. To solve this question, we, we need to consider all the options and identify the same pieces used between the given square and each answer option. This is why we need to use the, the process of elimination. Any option that uses a different piece that is not one of the pieces given or used in the, in the stimuli must be eliminated. We notice that option D uses the exact same pieces to form the square. We have that shape one is here where it's flipped over, shape two is here where it's also flipped over, shape three is here, shape four is here, and shape five is here. We can notice that the exact same shapes have been used to form another square and therefore the answer is D. Thank you for watching this lesson and hopefully it has helped you understand a bit about problem solving and thinking skills and the strategies on how to solve these questions. Please note as stated in the start of the lesson that studying and reading consistently are essential for successful outcomes.